Los Angeles Poverty Department for uh, providing this space, showcasing this this documentary, which was wonderful. Um, so, I, uh, I think most people in this room, probably uh, many people, have had experiences with uh, Fire Station Number Nine. Recognize them to be um, heroes mm -hmm. and very important people in the community. There's there are several benefits to living in Skid Row. One of them is if you call 911. Station number nine is going to come in within three minutes, yeah. and I've done that before, and they do show up. So, um, like, my hat's off to them. Yeah. Um, so that was a perspective about this fire, and it's not the only fire at a smoke shop in the toy district. Um, I'm just going to provide a very brief perspective of which is a little different, and that's someone that lives across the street from the toy district. The toy district is from third to fifth. Los Angeles to San Pedro. I've lived at uh, Fifth and San Pedro since about 2010. I've worked downtown though for about 25 years and been familiar with the toy district when it was actually a toy district. A lot of wholesale <coughs> toys, mostly um, uh, manufacturers from Taiwan and China, right? That's why it was called the toy district. Or some people call it toy town. So when I moved to the area, again, going back to 2010, around that time, it just coincided with uh, the time when a lot of states were starting to legal, uh, legalize marijuana, which, by the way, I'm a proponent of. I don't have a problem with that. It's all good. Um, it should have happened a long time ago. And at that time, I noticed, and it made sense, right, on a business level, a lot of these toy, uh, wholesalers that were uh, selling wholesale toys started switching over, most starting on third, mm -hmm. right, to selling like bombs, Smoke right? Shop. And so it was like you would walk by and you'd see these glass, beautiful bombs. I mean, they're pieces of art. <laughs> and so at, and there was only maybe a handful, maybe five or six at that time. And I thought, you know, this is kind of funny. It's kind of like, it's kind of cool. It's the bomb, bomb, people were saying bomb yeah. row. <laughs> okay, <laughs> bomb row, right, third. Yeah. So, okay, that's kind of cool. These are like beautiful pieces of art. I don't have a problem with it. And then since then, mm -hmm. the number of wholesale stores selling not only uh, glass bongs, but related smoking products, which I would later learn, you know, has just multiplied to the point where now these shops selling this type of product are on third, mm -hmm. they're on fourth, yep. they're on boy, they're on wall, they're on maple. It's damn near the whole toy district or a good three quarters, a good hundred shops at least. There was maybe like five, right, 2010. Now the vast majority of the toy district is wholesale shops selling smoking related mm -hmm. products. Now again, I didn't know this was, didn't think it was an issue until the fire started. And the Boyd Street fire wasn't the first fire to occur at a smoke shop. The, one of the first fires was in 2016. And I have an article here, Los Angeles Times, firefighters battle flames and exploding gas cylinders in downtown LA building. That's on, that was on third, that was in 2016. Okay, and there was another one too, but this one made the LA Times. Okay, yeah, and so, so when Boyd happened, that happened to be during COVID, and I, I wasn't working, right? So I lived about a block away from where this happened, 2020, and so everyone in my building, you know, it, it was a loud, loud explosion, knew what had happened, and so I was playing like, uh, investigative like Detective. reporter walking over there every day because I wasn't working right and so going over there with my camera phone and and the you know the fed ATF feds came in um, soon soon after the explosion taped off the whole area for weeks mm -hmm. and I was going over there to poke around and see what the hell happened and what I saw was 
canisters, which w were shown on the film, blown up canisters, nit nitrous oxide. Albert's going to talk a little bit about more, more about what this stuff is, because yeah. I don't even know what this stuff is, blocks away. Wow. So when this, I don't think it was mentioned in the film, but these exploding canisters exploded a block or two away. Mm -hmm. And I was documenting all this, and I was like, what in the hell is this? And why is no one talking about it? So I am going to uh, really quickly <coughs> actually pass the mic to Albert, who uh, I want to mention Charles Porter. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, was yeah thank you to Charles Porter who couldn't be here today but when I started mentioning this issue of these smoke shops to like um, poverty department you know um, Skid Row 2040 like I think this is a land use issue you know Charles Porter quickly came in and said yeah it's racist land use policy or something to that effect and I was like yeah 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 that's what's going on because there it's so concentrated all these shops in an area that's predominantly black predominantly low income like this would not come to find out it doesn't occur anywhere else in the United States this is an infamous district um, and so Charles Porter really gave me that great context and then he connected me um, with Albert who's been doing like he knows uh, what like because I'm just trying to figure out like what are these exploding products? You know what I mean? And so Albert knows uh, San Fernando Valley partnership, right? And so he can explain a little bit about Why these products are so concentrated in the toy district what they are and the fact you know Why are they so flammable and what the hell is going on? Yeah. Yeah. Thank, well, you. Thank, thank you for having us yeah. so tell you, What's interesting we're, we've arrived at the same place, different perspective, different impact, but we're arriving at the same place. And let me tell you how we arrived here. Um, 20, end of 2018, schools were calling us and saying, hey, uh, can you guys help us? What's going on? We're catching kids vaping like never before. And we don't know if it's nicotine or what is this stuff? I mean, it was epidemic and that's around the time when we saw the news of vaping epidemic, vaping yeah. epidemic. Yes. Where are they getting this stuff from? And we're like, whoa, what's going on? So we're going to schools, we're getting bags, bags of yeah. cartridges. But back then it was interesting. So it's interesting that that in, even in of itself would be an interesting expose to look at how mm -hmm. the vaping epidemic really was started by the tobacco companies. Mm -hmm. But what happened is kids started hacking the vaping cart, the cartridges, so they started making their own concentrate. So if you all remember, bud and dry leaf was the preferred method of smoking pot. Then all of a sudden, legalization came, you're wanting more higher potency product, and then boom, the cannabis concentrates. Kids learn how to make this stuff. Back then, you jump on YouTube, you just need a butane canister, a glass pipe, and you're making concentrates. And they started hacking their little cartridges. Well, the industry said, well, wait a minute. Oh. And they started making them. But what's interesting is what we're talking about here has really nothing to do with the regulated market. It's the explosion in the underground market. Yeah. And that's what we are. So people say, well, wait a minute. Albert, you guys anti-cannabis? Well, no, our concern is underage use. Yeah. Uh, uh, you where, know. Where, uh, could you back up a second? I'm really confused. Oh, no, no, please, please. Um, uh, uh, are you, uh, you say the underground market? This is the under <coughs> underground yes. It's, it's some kind of can. I guess yeah, I don't really. Oh no, no. I, uh, it's like a, a concentrate of cannabis. That's what it is. So let's. So the regulated market. So you have Prop sixty four legalized right. cannabis. Period. You, know, you have to go to a shop, show ID to come. Right, out. right, right. But what's happened as a result is there's been an explosion in the underground market. But the underground market that's hiding in plain sight. It, so this like market. It, it, it's a. Well, I, I mean, why is it an underground market? I mean. It's, yeah, so regulated. technically, yeah, we can't, we, we don't call it the black market, it's really the illicit market, so these smoke shops are operating as de facto dispensaries, so they're selling cannabis oh. products without oh, all license. the okay. licensing. And this is like some highly concentrated oh, yeah. THC yeah. thing, okay, yeah. Saturday morning. About yeah, this. no, no, I'm telling you, it's for us, we had to really kind of research it ourselves, Tomas has done a lot of yeah. research as well, so. 
I also want to mention, um, it, so there's a few different things right. going on. It, it's not, we're not talking about one thing. Um, these smoke shops carry a wide variety of products. They carry um, butane, yeah. mm -hmm. something called honey butane oil, which, which is highly extracted THC. They also carry stuff to cut. So with the cartridges that you vape with, that come from China, mostly they all come from China. Yeah. You can put anything in the cartridge. You can put tobacco yeah. or THC products in the cartridges. But just like um, street drugs, like cocaine, meth, like uh, just like uh, those drugs get cut with stuff <laughs> to up the profits mm -hmm. of the dealers, it's the same thing with these cartridges. So the cartridges can have tobacco products or THC products, right? Or, or, the, or the gunk, the goop. But uh, the people that are selling it cut it, cut the tobacco and cut the THC to make more money. And so there's um, toxic and underground, like I illegal types of, like shape, unregulated types of um, goop. I don't know how else to put it. Gunk. Gunk yes. That they that you can buy in the toy district. One of these such products was called Honey Cut, right. and it's like it's got the viscosity of honey. The thinking goes: <laughs> if it's not watery, you, if it's watery, it's probably fake and obviously mm -hmm. cut. But if it's really thick, like honey, oh, that's probably the real stuff. So they were selling, yeah, the consistency. So they were selling a product called Honey Cut in the toy district up until like 2019 to cut the THC with so the uh, people selling the cartridges could make more money with a less THC concentrate. So these, but these are the cartridges, for the same cartridges as vaping. Uh, yeah. Tomas, Tomas will explain the product, but let me just put the smoke yeah, shop yeah. issue just real quick in perspective. Look at it this way. The city of LA has more smoke shops than McDonald's or Starbucks. 73% mm -hmm. <laughs> of the schools in the city of LA are close to a smoke shop. Now, you all are fortunate to live in wholesale country. So these wholesalers supply all over the nation. thousands of smoke shops. Yeah, so think of it that way. So that's just the locations. Now, Tomas will yeah. talk about the process. So with all the products that are coming up or with just legalization, we saw a transition into the use of, not, not fully, but a lot of popularity around concentrates. So concentrates, think about it as an extract from the cannabis plant. So they take the THC, they extract it, concentrate it to a very potent form, uh, removing the flour, and they get an oil. So you'll hear things called uh, either crumble, shatter, uh, butane honey oil, a variety of things, right? Uh, and it really depends on how these products are manufactured. So you can uh, create extracts through either pressure, uh, through either uh, the use of a volatile or a flammable substance like butane, and what, that's what we're seeing here. So we're starting to see that a lot of these locations are actually supplying some of the other uh, illicit uh, manufacturers with the butane products that are basically used for the extraction process. So while the use of these products for extraction is legal, what we're seeing in these spaces is more of the open extraction, so people just do it in their backyard versus a lab that's going through a professional kind of process. So we see a lot of the wholesalers really participating in these, this activity. Not only do they sell the butane, but they also sell something called uh, like terpenes. Mm -hmm. Terpenes, flavor, flavorants, um, yeah. different things like that. So you'll see at these spaces that they're also advertising things like terpenes. And those are just the flavors or the things that they tend to cut the products with. Uh, when we saw the vaping epidemic pop up and a lot of the folks that were being hospitalized, not only were we seeing some of these um, uh, other chemicals that were being found, but vitamin E was another product that was being found in these, uh, in these uh, cartridges, right? So it just makes it a really easy way for folks to come into the toy district or bomb row, uh, purchase all the different products that they need to be able to manufacture the illicit cartridges, and then operate and sell these things. So what we end up seeing is a tainted market, right? A market that basically has products that are not regulated, that have not been tested, uh, that may contain pesticides, mung, fungus, mold, mm -hmm. all these different things mm -hmm. aside from the other chemicals that may be in these products, right? So at the end of the day, this evolution in the market has really created a, an opportunity for folks who want to participate in the illegal end, uh, and then for wholesalers like this to supply all these products across the different areas. So now smoke shops um, saw this as an opportunity and have now been 
participating in the illicit market by selling some of these cartridges. Now, with the hemp and all, uh, and the availability of uh, now some of these other chemicals through the hemp plant, we're starting to see things like THCO, yep. HHC, THCP, and these are just chemicals that exist in the cannabis plant, but are now being extracted and sold in some of these spaces. What you also find in some of these spaces is the packaging for the illicit products. So that, what I mean by packaging is just the empty boxes, just the empty cartridges, uh, branded material for these products. So it, like I said, it makes it really easy for folks to participate in the illicit market. And when we talk about the use of uh, these concentrates, what you, you kind of heard uh, in the, what you kind of heard about uh, in there in terms of butane cannabis for the explosion, so they are using butane for the extraction, right? It is a, it is a simple process that folks go through. It is very dangerous, uh, but it is happening. So you tend to see a lot of these actually stored in these locations in large amounts. So let me show you. One of these can blow up a one-bedroom apartment. One canister of it gets out and it's ignited, can literally blow up a one-bedroom apartment. So imagine you have boxes of these wow. in these Great. locations. So remember, they're selling wholesale. Yeah. yeah, and it varies. So you have uh, uh, products that are like 300 milliliters, that's 300 milliliters, but you will see canisters of up to 1,000 or 800 milliliters, so much water uh, tanks. So it is uh, very dangerous when they're being stored in and the kind of situations like what you saw in the video. Now in 2017, there was uh, a, an assembly bill that was uh, that introduced, AB 112, uh, and the goal was really to kind of try to establish a monitoring system for uh, the sale of some of these uh, butane canisters, right? Unfortunately, that bill was vetoed. Um, it was not, uh, you know, not passed, so, uh, and that really was because they thought it was too expensive to establish that. And the goal for that was to limit the amount of products uh, or butane canisters being sold to one individual. Mm -hmm. So they're trying wow. to limit it to, I believe it was 600 milliliters total within a 30 day period, right? Huh. And the goal is to limit basically folks going into these spaces, purchasing very large amounts and participating in this illicit activity. And I mean, the store, the, what you saw at the liquor store. Oh yeah, no, no, there's a picture there. I was at a liquor store, Mini Mart, and there's a kid buying everything they had, the butane canisters. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's for home-based production, but now imagine, this is a kid oh, at a see. local mom and pop. Now you have all the smoke shops that are littered throughout the city coming here to buy all their products. Yeah. So this literally is supplying a lot of your smoke shops uh, that are selling throughout the city of LA. So imagine the amount of this product. Now, the other product that you saw was nitrous oxide. What did you all know what they use those little cartridges for? The whippets? Yeah. Well, yeah. In the 90s, yeah. and the yeah, racing. And this was actually, I was going to... In the 80s. I guess yeah. the 80s too. But in the 90s, where I come from, uh, they were used at raves. It was kind of like a quick high head change. But the question I had, as opposed to the butane that's used for concentrates, hash, wax, whatever it is, the person or the people who were storing the whippets, that was, I mean, that is that getting filtered into the cannabis industry as no, well, or is that just those, another illicit... They're selling it at the smoke shop. So remember, oh. whippets oh. are for whipped cream. But well, smoke shops are selling. You can get a box of 24 for 20 bucks yeah. in 1999. No way. Wow. Yeah. So wow. imagine. Uh, what I mean, happens, what do you do with them? You've got to find how to rip it. What would I do with it? Do you, do you inhale it? Yeah. So yeah. they would yeah. fill yeah. up a balloon. Yeah. But or imagine. Yeah, now smoke shops sell something called a whippet cracker. It's tiny. <coughs> so the kid can technically take it into school and yeah. inhale in school. So those are the incidents that we're seeing. So schools now are seeing increasing cannabis-related incidents, more incidents with uh, these uh, NAS cartridges. And we see them at parks all the time. When you yeah. see them, it's not one or two. You'll see a bunch, you know, and, and I'll tell you. But for us, we're like, wait a minute. So smoke shops are selling yeah. whippets for bakers, right? But yeah. they're not for bakers. So yeah. Yeah. imagine it really goes to show how these places are literally hiding in plain, plain yeah. sight. But imagine, what is it, 73% of the schools in LA are within a thousand feet of a smoke shop. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So, 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 so let me this right. So, so the toy district is, is, is the wholesale yeah. and yeah. like oh. smoke shop That's the operators. source. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. the source. So Albert's on the other end right. dealing the with like yeah. the, the, the problem of, of this product for youth, right? Like, so yeah. it's going to places where it shouldn't be. Right. The issue in the toy district 
is we're the source and the problem is it's highly concentrated you saw the images in that film there's boxes and boxes and boxes stacked sky high of butane right, yeah. right? of butane and so it's con like it's concentrated there's over a hundred shops with butane and whippets and, like goo and toxic goo. That's the problem. And I also want to say for the record here that there, this is a completely unregulated area, um, you know, by the city, by the county, I don't know. But, you know, both Albert and I have experience and, you know, we reached out to the city attorney, council district 14, that's Kevin De Leon. The fire department, love those guys, yes. but um, no one, not one person in the city would make a public comment about this issue. Really? No one. We presented to the city attorney's office in 2019. Yeah. yeah. No one will comment about this. No one There's will talk about regulation. But just or, just or the say, Los Angeles ATF. I just want to say the one thing that yeah. you talked about, racist land use policies. Yeah. They know this stuff is explosive. Yeah. <laughs> and if you yeah. had one shop that blew up the building, it's almost like, well, it, you know, you, they don't mind losing folks here. It's not yeah. as bad as if it were. Yeah, they, they, they I mean, know. You have to really look at it that way. It's well, by design. To, if I'm understanding, sorry, if I'm understanding correctly, so there's two issues. One is you can go in and legally buy butane or whatever, you can legally buy it even though you know what the person's really buying it for and you're trying to figure out how to like deal with that issue. But it is a legal purchase that's taking place. But a lot of this other stuff, it has to be illegal. Like, a lot of, a lot of like storing X amount of butane, yeah. how can that be it's legal? It's unregulated. You would yeah. think it would be illegal, but it's not regulated. I also reached out to Los Angeles ATF. That's their job, to deal with explosive shit. No comment. Really? No comment. They explicitly no. said they didn't want to make a comment. Wow. Yeah, they didn't want it what? specifically. We yeah. have no comment on this movie or this issue. Yeah. I, I also want to say I, uh, I knew, you know, because again, going back to 2020 when I didn't have a job and I was walking over to Boyd every day, like, what's going on? Um, so I saw that the federal ATF department agency was there. So I FOIA'd them. I did a public records request on the Boyd fire, and I did get a redacted um, report back, which I'm gonna send to you guys. Yeah. And what I learned, I didn't read the whole thing. I, I, I was doing my homework before tonight, but um, I need to read the whole thing. But what I, but what I did read um, is this. The, uh, after much investigation, it was determined that probably what started the fire was a contract worker that didn't know anything about the toy district, didn't work there full time, happened to be coming by in one of the back alleys, picking up some boxes to take somewhere else, and was smoking a cigarette, <coughs> dropped the cigarette, had no idea there was explosives in the area, and the cigarette is what accidentally ignited this fire. Now there was two, there was two theories, that was one theory, and the assumption is that's probably what happened, accidental, right? But the other theory was all these vape cartridges which have batteries in them combusted, started to ignite on its own. That was the other theory. But the, uh, after much investigation, it was determined probably this guy, because there's video, there's cameras in that area, so they saw someone with a cigarette, and then all of a sudden he didn't have the cigarette, and they're like, that's probably what did it. Mm -hmm. So there's people working in the area, smoking, have no idea that there's like boxes and boxes of butane, and casually tossing cigarettes in the area. So I'll just kind of leave you with that. So I, I, I understand there's maybe not a logical answer to this, but given that, given the issue, but then giving the incredible publicity that this fire got, you're saying the city attorney, CD, you're saying that no government official is even paying attention to this? No. They will no. not comment on they it. They will not comment on it. They well, then what are they, so then, so they're doing something, but they refuse to talk about what they're doing. Who says they're doing anything? 
Well, that's what, I, that's what I just said, but you're saying they won't comment, which implies that something's happening. Yeah, but it sounds like nothing has happened. Nothing is happening. 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 Noth
about Skid Row in 15 years. And it, it's out of Leaf Leak. But there's some like award-winning journalists that did this. But yeah, they break down the supply chain. So the name of the article is Journey of a Tainted Vape Cartridge from China's Labs to Your Lungs. Mm. And it's incredible. And what these, it, it's a long piece. And what these journalists do is they, they backtrack folks that have, uh, uh, yeah, like contracted deadly like lung infections and, and are literally dying and from smoking vape cartridges on the East Coast, they backtracked and tracked it all back to the toy district. Yes. Wow. And stuff coming in from China and people mixing up vats of goop like in their bathtub, basically, and stuffing it in vape cartridges. And another thing to know about what goes on in the toy district is legitimate vape products, their packaging, you can buy counterfeit packaging in the toy district. Mm -hmm. So you can put together bootleg goop in cartridges and then get counterfeit packaging yes. to make it look legal. Mm -hmm. wow. yeah. And they're killing. We're losing like four people a day uh, are ODing around here. And, and so these kids can get this so easily. And they're targeting the schools. The elementary schools are the hugest target of these babies. And so to me, that's the real problem here is, yes, the fires, but our children. Our children are so susceptible because it's so sweet. It's honey. It, it, it's cotton candy. And it has all these illegal substances because they use those fake cartridges that you're talking about, and with the with the cigarettes and with the um, uh, the hashish oil and also the marijuana, and then they add fentanyl, they add um, uh, crystal meth, they add all these other drugs, so that you can get it. Oh, here's some stuff that keeps you high and awake, so you can go do good on your school grade. Here's some stuff when you go home, you can sleep. So they're not saying what's in it because when they look at the ingredients, they have the fake packaging. So the parents see it and they say, oh, this is okay. You know, it, it, it's legal. It's, it's a great package. I looked up the product and it's not bad. So the parents allow it to be in the house and the schools do the same thing. What about the waste of the actual cartridge? Oh. Is there, do you guys have any data on what happens after oh, someone that, finishes it? Well, look, you all just saw the news. Uh, six people were killed out in San Bernardino all behind an illegal growth. So the other side of all of that too is, so just think about it this way, I'm a grower. They test my product and it fails state testing. I spent thousands of dollars growing this stuff. Do you think I'm gonna throw it away? Oh, no, no. no. Sell it. Sell it. Sell it. And then I can make concentrates with product that had mold, fungus, bam, oh. pesticides. They're finding nickel and other, mm -hmm. you know, chemicals in there. So it's, it's a major issue, I'll tell you, it's got to Albert, you had some, um, when we were emailing a little yes. bit before yes. this talk, you had some statistics that I had no idea even existed um, about how many explosions. The Heidi report. Yeah, yeah. like uh, yeah, the high intensity. Reading drug. that, I think, would be pretty interesting for folks to know. I don't know where you got that information, by the way. Yep, yep. And I saw the high intensity drug trafficking report basically documents the uh, all the different uh, types of drug related incidents and trends across uh, the United States. One thing they did focus on specifically for cannabis was the amount of uh, kind of uh, home labs or extraction oh, labs that focus yeah. on uh, butane honey oil or uh, cannabis concentrate. So what they documented was approximately 174 total. Mm -hmm. um, so it's definitely a very large amount. Uh, it's a trend that uh, is growing. Uh, folks are looking at other methods of extraction, but it, it continues to be very popular because it's easy for folks to do it. Right, mm -hmm. uh, it, the products, everything's available, um, yeah. and if you have enough trim or enough flour, it's pretty easy to make uh, the stuff. It is dangerous, but people are willing to go that instrument. Yeah. Yeah. Tent, uh, I, 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 where I live, I live right in the hardest kid grow, uh, pretty close to the uh, toy district in Gladys Park. And so all of a sudden you hear it, and you're like, boom, 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 and you're like, well, we just have a gunshot, but it's the tents. The tents are exploding because they're making it in their tents, oh, wow. and, and, and you have an explosion. So whenever you hear these big explosions and you're wondering what it is, cooking it's because they're, they're cooking that shit in their tent. Listen to this one. There were 132 reported clandestine lab incidents in California in 2020. How many were in skid row? 132, 64% were honey oil extraction, yes. followed by methamphetamine. Yes, so there you go. Think that's what that there would be more meth labs and things. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's where the money is. Number one. That's where your big box is. That goes to show you how it, it's not management. your mother's or your grandmother's uh, joint, right? <laughs> it's like this is some different stuff now. And you have no idea whether you're getting anymore. illegal or legal yeah. products. You have no idea when you're buying it, yeah. what is real and what's not. Yeah, a lot of the products right now are, I mean, when you're talking about concentrates like shatter, which is probably what you're getting with when you're using uh, butane, uh, you're getting like 70 and up percent THC. So that's how potent it is. So it's much, Huge much amount. more. Huge. So a very small amount, which is why they call it a, a dab, uh, is enough to get you much more having uh, just one joint. So just so you know, concentrates are also your uh, key ingredient for edibles. So edibles. Yeah, there, that's, that was the other thing. The candy, so all the that, candy oil, that they sell the, the same way. You need to make the edibles, which are now the preferred method of ingestion for young people. Especially so much the ones so that the Wall Street Journal had to write a piece on talking to your kids about edibles because there's just... If I said marijuana overdose, it doesn't make sense, right? Overdose and cannabis right, yeah, are synonymous. Yeah. But what's added? But now, yeah. with the higher yeah. potency and the methods of... That's you know, a bit. It, the, the amount, the amount to, to overdose on cannabis is, is so astronomical, like yeah. it would be almost impossible to overdose. It's the not anymore. Not it's, it's not anymore. Not anymore. No, no, literally, it's I just read a part of it. You can't really overdose on cannabis. about an actual yeah. overdose on cannabis? Nobody's overdosed so on So they call it, it's it's add an, an adverse, now they're using yeah. different terminology, adverse experience because that of That doesn't the mean they don't get ridiculous. But yeah. nobody's yeah. over it. So a lot no, of it's, it's the chemicals they put in. Right. So what happens is it mirrors a mental health emergency. People kind of start. Literally nobody's yeah. mirrors. Miguel, yeah. would you like to share anything? Oh, no, I was saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just wanted to say uh, Miguel also came awesome. out from uh, San Fernando Valley Partnership. Well, thank you. So thank you to them. And I'm definitely going to be talking to these guys more because I just can't believe this. there's no regulation for, at the very least, storing large quantities of yeah. butane, yeah. you know, in a, concentrated in an area. Um, and, you know, when the feds came and, uh, after the Boyd Street fire and, like I said, taped off the area, I thought, okay, now things are going to change. They're not gonna, there's not going to be so many smoke shops. They'll, you know, the feds will clean it all up. That's not what's happened. In fact, there's been more smoke shops opening in the area yeah, since so much money. And they, they're looking, they used to kind of look, um, I don't know, like mom and pop with like hand painted signage. Now they're looking real slick. Oh, yeah. Like there's more money, right? And so there's been more, more that's market. open. There's been more that have opened. They're looking fancier, um, for want of a better word. And I just can't believe they're, they're, they're allowed to expand. Like, uh, I, I, is all of Skid Row going to end up being taken over the by smoke dollars, shops? The yeah, smoke shops are selling illicit cannabis. <coughs> they're not a licensed dispensary. Uh, they're selling butane to manufacturers. <coughs> they're selling nitrous oxide. It's supposed to be for whipped cream, but I don't see many cooks going. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the thing is, it's with the dealer. Can I ask a yeah. question? Because I'm very curious, because uh, you brought this up. Who is leasing these places? Yeah, Who is owning these buildings? I would ask you. I mean, I yeah, <laughs> that's an enigma, Conrad. It's an enigma it's because possible. they don't want to be known. But you know, look at the other side of it. That's what's driving the rents up in this area. Now. Oh, yeah. Well, with, with regards to um, you know marijuana, the herb, the flower, you know nature. Um, if there was boxes and boxes and boxes of herb, that's fine. That caught on fire. No. That wouldn't be a problem. Wouldn't it's explode. the explosives. <laughs> that's the problem that you extract yeah, with, you know, like I don't I don't if they want to store like tons of marijuana in the toy district, fine. Fine, right? That's not what they're storing over there. They're storing explosive products in order to extract, you know, they're not storing the herb. Yeah. And then I also want to just mention this Leafly project, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, Leafly um, article again, called Journey of a Tainted Vape Cartridge from China's Labs Love to Your me. Lungs. The whole perspective this, of this article and Leafly, these are pro-cannabis people. This is the cannabis industry saying these are the bad players. We want the cannabis industry, the legitimate cannabis industry, to grow and cro prosper. And these people that are selling this product that's Tainting like it. ruining people's lungs, these are the bad players. So this is a cannabis publication yeah. putting this information yeah. out there. And it's also these kids, their lungs now are getting infected. Their heart is being infected. 
not because of the marijuana. The marijuana helps. It's what they're adding into it that's so bad. It's what they're. It's vitamin E. It's what they're adding to it. It's not the cannabis. It's the additives. Yes, they Or even the flavors. Are yeah. The flavors. The, the sugar candy. The, the honey. The cotton candy. But, all, but I mean, they're also selling. You know, the fake jewel. Right. Yeah. They're also selling the product. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's yeah. so it's like it's, it's not yeah. one. Yeah. And no, and then the big thing right now is is kind of like what you mentioned. So it's not the hemp or even the CBD stuff. No. It really is. You got a group of people that are messing with the chemicals with the nat the natural herb, uh, yeah. and yeah. basically altering it. And they don't know what uh, they're doing. Not only that, they're making they're high products. Well, so it, it, it's, yeah. exper it's an experimentation problem, which means we should be pushing more uh, science classes. Yes. <laughs> for kids. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. So we have the Skid Row resident representative from D Lank here. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering if a grassroots effort like this, no one will comment or show up, since the neighborhood council literally is part of city government, and a major part of a neighborhood council is to do town halls, forums, like literally to do this. If the neighborhood council reaches out to the city attorney or Kevin DeLeon's office or whoever else would be in government, you would think, yeah. you know, paying attention to this, would a city government entity reaching out to other city government entities bring someone into this who obviously don't feel a need to be here right now? All right. Thank you, Tom. Do you want to say something better than that? No comments. No comments. I'm Bella Naomi. I am the Southern City East resident chair on D-Link. Um, thank you all for being here. Someone that I think that getting back to the film that I would also like to thank are all the firefighters from Firehouse 9. Um, and I guess to answer a question of if city will listen more if a neighborhood council members is close to community and government that you can be, um, like kind of that go-between, if they would listen more. Um, I think it depends on what we have to say. So if we want to come up with this is legislation that we think would be valuable, these are the type of allowances that you can have on site, which th it sounds like there are some that has been I'm um, already proposed that didn't necessarily go all the way through, um, potentially. And I am here to have those conversations and listen. Um, we do have our board meetings on the second Tuesday of every month at 6.30 in City Hall. Um, if you look up D-Link online, it'll show up all of the board meetings and then committee meetings as well. Um, and they're open to the public. Anybody can come, so feel free. and. Bring, bring your questions, bring your solutions, bring anything that you have, because we're here to listen and be that go-between. I've certainly been in many dispensaries where you buy an eighth or eighth of two and you get a free dab. I've watched dabs blow up in people's faces while they're running dispensaries on generators because they all come in and pull the power thinking regulations working. So there is dangers. We're not talking about just consumption. And I'll say in this room real loud, I believe you people don't overdose on marijuana, yeah. but you mix it with yeah. others, right? A vaping and edible and flower are three different types. And yeah. a person that takes high blood pressure medicine and a person that did overdose less than a year ago, accidentally because of it, yes, you gotta be aware of it. Yeah. You don't know what the consumptions of an edible, even legalized is. Honestly. And mixing all those three is like taking three different types of low breath pressure medicine. Like it kicks your butt. I just want to thank Poverty Department again. There's Yay! like this is what we need. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, yet in John. Woo! Uh, and if Henriette wants to say anything, I also again want to thank um, you know San Fernando Valley Partnership yeah. for coming down thank all the way from the valley. Find them on Facebook. They have like I recently learned of them, and they have some amazing information and statistics about like these explosions and whatnot, mm. and the type of concentrates and just products that are on the market now. What's going on? Regulation, non-regulation, bills that are coming through about limiting uh, the, the explosives. So you can please look them up.